Hi, and welcome to my channel. This is Paint Girly, and you have landed yourself at Bricolage with Paint Girly. And today I want to talk to you about painty paper. Have you ever heard that term? If you're new to collage art or junk journal or um, art journaling, anything like that, you may, if you've been listening to any YouTube videos uh, with those topics, you may have heard the term painty papers. Painty papers. When I first started my journey along this art um, genre. So what the heck is a painty paper? I had no idea. I just recently googled painty paper and it kept trying to give me paint papers and that takes you down a whole different avenue and has nothing to do with painty papers as I know them as an art journalist and as someone who likes to collage and do mixed media art. So I thought I would just take the time to make a little video and explain what painty papers are. And it's really quite simple, at least from my perspective. It's paper that you paint on. It can be watercolor, it can be acrylic. I don't work in oil paint, but I guess you could use oil paint as well. It's just simply paper that you paint on and you can paint on it in any fashion that you want you could finger paint it quite frankly so I have some samples that I'm going to show you this is just a sheet of composition paper and on this I just I think I just spritzed some spray stain possibly some watercolor cool right this was done on a gel pad, gel plate, I guess I should say. And I'll show you that in a little bit. <clears throat> but this is a uh, painty paper with a little more intention. You can see where I pressed in some leaves. And I think these were flowers that I dipped into paint, squashed them onto my uh, jelly plate, and then pulled up what they call a print. But in essence, it's a painty paper. I pulled out my Rolodex. Now I haven't done anything on this other than just preparing my little index cards here that are attached to my Rolodex. And quite a few of these are painty papers. Now I just happened to do these on my jelly plate, but you don't have to have a jelly plate to create some painty papers and some you can see have a little more of a design factor and some are just plain and i am going to use these to eventually create art and then you might have seen say like a little tiny composition book these are so cute. No, 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 I don't know. I guess this is why oh, I did it both ways. So I really just put some paint on the front of this and the cover is paper. And throughout this little book, I sat down with my jelly plate. And these are mostly watercolors that I then put on the paper. Again, painty papers. Now, these are painty papers, but a different kind. These are envelopes. I actually took an envelope. So you can see here, I made it into a little journal. But this is the envelope. And I put paint on them. Again, I happen to use my jelly plate. And then you can see I decorated. I did some inking, some stamping, and I decorated these envelopes to make my journal really cute. I added some fabric. I stitched these together to make a little journal, a journal of pockets where I can store things. I could journal on this. I can do more art. But again, it started out as painty papers. 
paint the envelopes, if you will. Now in this book, this is just a journal, not a journal, a um, like a daily planner that I picked up at a thrift shop. Now you can see here, these are intact too, like they were in the little composition book. And what I did on these was just paint. I either did it with a brush, I may have rolled it on with a brayer. If I had leftover paint from a project, I'll open this book, slap in the paint, all creating substrates, if you will, or backgrounds to create more art. This one I use a stencil and then rolled the paint on top. There's all kinds of stuff you can do. This was a stencil, this is a stencil. The little dots I have over here. And then of course, here you can see, I stamped on top of it, just prepping papers to do some art in the future. Now these are all in progress. I don't know that I have any of these that are finished. Now look at that. That's kind of wild, huh? So really, you can do whatever you like. But this is what we're talking about when you might hear some of us on YouTube talking about our painty papers. It's just kind of whatever. Now, I'm working on and creating an art journal for my granddaughter. <clears throat> and in her, it's just a composition book. In her book that I'm creating for her, I've got some painty papers. This was a watercolor painty paper background. Here, I put on some extra paint that I had left over from a project. I've got paint here some watercolor paint there and you can see that I've added things on top to create some interest again here is another mixture of paints some of it's sparkly some might be shimmery if I have some leftover paint from a project I'll just open up a book that I'm working on and add the leftovers Sometimes I'm intentional about what colors I use or creating painting papers in a book for a potential layout. So this then speaks to how can you use the painting papers? Well, you can use them in collage. You can use them in clusters. You can use them to tell a story. This I put bright pink down. I added some fabric, buttons, some stickers. Again, painty paper. This time I had put down a stencil. You can see real subtly in the background that stencil print. And then here I use some texture paste to create some texture on this page, but it's all considered painty paper. All right. Now this is my not so everyday journal. A lot of gals that I know in the, um, in my art uh, community, um, use a daily journal. They do one every month. I'm not very good at that. So I created my not so daily journal. And in here, I have a lot of painty papers. Underneath this page is a painty paper. Underneath here, I brushed on paper. Now these pages are finished. Look how cool they are. They turn out so neat. This was watercolor and I just thought this is a little piece of a napkin and I thought that went well with this. Painted black one here for some contrast. 
Now here's some strips of painty paper. See, I like the way that looked. So I was throwing the rest of the sheet away or use portion of the sheet of painty paper. See, I think that is so cool. I want to use that in my book somewhere. See, this probably will look good here. I can just add that in, just glue it down. Now I'm mostly showing you either my journals or books. I did show you a couple of, of single pages. But you can basically make painty paper out of any paper. And in any color palette you like. Okay. So today I want to show you, in addition to telling you what painty paper is, I want to show you, I did show you how it can be used. I'm also going to show you a cluster. But first, I'm going to show you how to make some painty paper. And all you need is paper, and you need some paint, whether it be acrylic or watercolor. I'm really not sure about um, oil paint, because I just I haven't used oil paint in a lot of years. So these are just some pages that I pulled apart from a book that I was going to use the cover to create a journal. So these are just some, I think, some um, Reader's Digest pages that I pulled out. So I'm just going to put some acrylic paint on this little dish that I here have here that I can work from. I'm going to use my brayer if I can get it to roll. And I'm just going to squirt some paint on here. You don't have to water the paint down. You can use a combo of colors, things that you like that will go together. And I'm just going to squeeze out some light avocado. This is a Decor Americana. Now I do have some water here and I certainly have my brushes. So I'm going to take that avocado green first. And then I also have, this is just some paper. Um, I printed a label and this whole bottom part of the paper you know, it's just scrap paper. Now you can be more intentional and you could use rice paper or any other kind of paper you might have. Say uh, you printed a document, you don't need it anymore. Instead of throwing that out, you can use it to make and create painting paper. Now, another thing that you can do with the acrylic paint is see, I have a little bit of this left in my dish. Now, you can add more paint to that and create something else on these painty papers. Or sometimes I just like to spritz it with a little bit of water. Let's see if we can get anything different. Yeah, we get a kind of a different look to add. It, it waters that down. And it just gives us another layer or another look, different color. Um, you could spatter it on there. Let's pick another color. Let's pick, uh, let's pick something blue. Green and blue go well together. This one happens to be Blue Harbor, also a deco art. I like deco art. I use um, ceram coat paint. And I also use at times um, folk art, but folk art is a thicker paint. And I really kind of like that for one stroke painting. So again, I can come in here with my brayer and I can just add a little bit of this blue on top again with my brayer. doesn't have to come all the way out to the edges. You just do it according to what you like. Now you let that dry, depending on the project you're using. If you're going to use this in a glue book or a collage, you only need to paint one side. But if you want to fold this and use it in a journal, like I did with this page, you might want to have both sides with some paint on it. That would be up to you. So now let me show you. You may not have a brayer. So let me just mess around with a couple sheets of paper here. 
with a paintbrush. So let's put our little brayer aside. I'm going to add, I like what blue and purple look like together. So I'm going to put a little bit of purple on that blue paint. And I put my blue paint back, trying to be neat. And I'm going to add a little drop of this. And I've just got my paintbrush in water. You don't want to use a dry brush. You can use any kind of a brush, any size brush. You can use a round. You can use a square, a uh, flat. Uh, you can use an angled brush, whatever you might have. You could use um, a Q-tip. You could use your fingers. You could use a piece of saran wrap crumpled up and just bounce it on your paper. So I'm just gonna take a couple little dabs of this paint and just start making some marks on my paper. See, this is so easy to create painty paper. Uh, already, that looks kind of cool to me. You might have some of, uh, maybe you have children, and you have some, um, oh gosh, tempura paint, maybe? I don't know. I haven't, my kids are old. I haven't had young kids. I have my grandchildren, but they have, um, I think they have like little watercolor paints and things like that at home to use. Let's see, let's get something really funky here. I have some neon, neon colors. This also is a deco art. This is a neon. Depending on what you have going on. Or how you might want to use this. Now I'm going to take that same brush that I had. I'm rinsing out the purple and the blue. Let's bring this back. Taking most of the water out, and then I put that wild neon color down. Now, this is a flat brush, but I can come back in here and go like this. You can swirl it, you can make any kind of marks. You could use the end of a um, old credit card or gift card that, a, not a credit card, but well, maybe a credit card that you don't use anymore or a gift card that you've used all the, the cash on it. And instead of throwing that away, you can use it to make marks on your paper. I don't know if I have enough paint here. Can you see me making those marks? You can scrape your paint on. Let's do that. Say you don't have uh, any brushes, but you have an old gift card. You want, just want something that has a little stability to it. So you can put some paint on it and you can do what we call scraping your paint. So let's put out a little paint. Let's see. I've got a lot of things sitting here in front of all my paint bottles. Uh, let's get a little bit of this again. Deco art. This is called Coral Shell. This might look nice with a little bit of that hot pink in it, actually. So let's take a bit of that and let's take a little bit more of this neon. Put a little bit more of that out. I love the neons. And you don't want to leave your brush sitting with paint in it. So just put that in water. Just make sure you wash that out. If you leave it sit in your water, especially if you're a newbie and you want to get started maybe on some kind of art and you don't know where to go and you're curious and you don't know a whole lot, don't let your brushes sit in, the, in your jar of water like this. Because the longer that sits, your brush hairs can bend and that's really not good for your brush and then when you want to use it again you won't be happy so see all i'm doing is tapping this 
the end of this card in that puddle of paint and making different marks. Now some of this I'm leaving dry, but how cool is that? That is a very background or substrate for art. Now I also mentioned watercolor. So you can do the same thing. You can go to Walmart and you can get a pan of watercolor paints for really not a lot of money. Now, this just happens to be um, a Jane Davenport brand. I just have this sitting here by my desk where I work, and it's convenient for me to grab this. So that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to take another sheet of that copy paper that I cut labels out of, and I'm going to take just some plain water that I have in a spritzer, and I'm just going to spritz these. You want to spritz your watercolor paints, if that's what you're using, and let that paint kind of soften up. And then generally speaking, you want to use a brush that's been earmarked for watercolor. But if you are not an expert, And you don't want to buy a lot of new brushes. I would say give your acrylic paint brush a good cleaning. With just some soap at your kitchen sink. Maybe some Dawn. And rinse it out real well. Now water paint is watery. It can be watery, right? So I'm basically an acrylic painter at heart. And I don't use a lot of watercolor paint, but you can mix your watercolor paints and really make it watery and get a real cool effect. And green might look good, so we can add some green. Just keep adding some water, and your paper might get a little warped, but that's not really going to affect how it can be used. Now if you get it real juicy and you make a puddle, let's make a puddle of paint over here. Let's just add a lot of water here. I shall I could use my little sprayer. And if I load up my brush and get a lot of paint on here, you can do this too. You just tap your brush and it makes all kinds of cool spots. You can do a couple different colors. You can layer it, let this dry, add some more. You just have to remember that if you're using a traditional watercolor paint, it will move once you wet it again, say with another color or a wet brush, you can move that around. It's not permanent. Now, there are some permanent watercolor paints on the market, and that's another video. Okay, so now we've got this working, but I did mention when we first, when I first came on about a jelly plate. Now, a jelly plate is just that. It's a plate. It's an art tool. They come in a, a plastic clam like this. Now, this one was at one time eight and a half by 11. But I cut mine into pieces so that I could do some different things with it. Now, I do have a large one where I can do a great big large piece of paper. And that works for me. I do a lot of art. So I have some options that maybe the novice may not have. But you can put on here watercolor or acrylic paint, or you really like, you can combine them. I don't see why you couldn't combine them. So I'm going to grab another sheet of paper. Let's see what I have here. Oh, that's kind of small. Let's get another sheet of book paper. A 
couple sheets here. And since I have my watercolor pan here, let's get some more of this. Mm. I'm looking at my different water jars I have here. Make sure I grab the right brush. So when I put watercolor on this, now you can buy this. I think you can get this at Walmart too. I'm not sure if they carry it in the store, but certainly you can get it online. You can get it um, at your craft box stores and you can Google it. I, I think there's a brand called Jelly. There may be some other brands too. Um, but it, it's like a piece of jello. You know when your kids were little or your grandkids and you made them those jello squares? It's kind of like that. Actually, you can find directions on how to make your own jelly plate. These can be a little pricey. It just depends. And so I'm going to paint some of this juicy bit that uh, we made here that we spattered on that other paper. And then I'm going to pick up some more of that blue and green over here. And I, I think you can see it's kind of separating from itself on the jelly plate. I think that's cool. That's going to give us a great print. And what you do is you put your paper down. Now these colors might be pretty light. And then when you pull it back up, you get that kind of blotchy look. Let's add a little more color. See if we can get some more color and not water it down so much. And you don't really have to be particular for this kind of a look. Now you certainly can be more intentional. And if you're interested in the jelly plant and jelly printing, there are a lot of YouTube videos that you can watch. Uh, Devin Rex for Art is someone that I personally know and would recommend her um, jelly printing videos if you're interested. So then you can just put your paper back down. I might have maybe should have tried that. Just, just you know, tap it down, rub it down, and then you can pull it up. Okay, I think that's cool. Now we can also use this plate for acrylic paint. So let's do one with acrylic paint. Let's use those same colors we used. Let's use some of this coral shell. And I'm going to use my brayer. And let's add a little bit. Well, let's put the paint, a little drop of this neon right on the plate. So I'm going to take my little brayer. And I'm going to load that up with some paint. And then I'm going to run into my pink. Move this around. Now, if you really get involved with this technique, you can put different um, shapes or images. Or you can put a stamp in here or a stencil. But with the acrylic paint, you don't want that to dry. It takes the watercolor paint a little longer to dry. So you have a little more time. But your acrylic paint might dry quite quickly on this. So when you just pull that up, you've created some painty paper. Now, say you're not crazy about that and you want a little bit more going on there. Let's add a little bit of blue. Let's just see what happens. We'll put a little bit of blue. Well, this is a small, it's a small plate. So let's just, now these are just basic, quick little tips for you to get some painting paper created. Yeah, I think I need a little more paint than I have here. Let's use up some of this that's in my dish. Put some down here. Let's add a little bit more of this blue. Now I'm looking around my work area because I didn't really think about this part of it. I'm looking for, oh, I see something. I've got a, 
I've got a medicine bottle here, not a bottle, a little medicine container here. It's got a round cap. So let's just gently, now you can cut your plate, so you don't want to put anything sharp on your, should you get a jelly plate. And, you know, I've, I know of someone, I don't remember who it is right this minute, might have been Devin from Devin Rex for Art. Sometimes you might luck into a plate at a thrift store. Oh my gosh, wouldn't that be swell? But like I said, and what I showed you earlier, you don't really need a jelly plate to do this. How cool is that? Right? It's simple. Now, see, I have this cool stuff going on here. Let's see what else I have sitting here right by my desk. Now, as this dries, there's some just white card stuff. Let's see what we can do with this. As this dries, you know, I might be able to pick that up where you can see some of that, that image as that dries. I'm just not sure what would be the best to pick that up with probably some white paint but my white paint has gone a wall let's see <laughs> i might go darker just to see if it works this probably isn't going to work i am i consider myself to be jelly plate challenge i just do basic basic stuff like this right so this one again is uh deco art americana and this is tropical blue so i'm just going to put a little bit of tropical blue now this is just a small like five by seven size i think i don't know it might even be a four by six i don't know so i'm just going to run this around the plate and then I'm going to take a little piece of cardstock and just pop it down. Actually, so my fingers don't get all messy. I'm trying to keep my fingers from getting messy. I'm not doing a great job at that. I got ink all over them earlier. So we'll take that up and then we'll pull up our little piece of cardstock. And you can just faintly see. See, it's all gone from the plate. And you can just faintly see those little tiny circles that we had put on from this. So these are a couple of options for you. And these are called painty papers. I'm really liking that one. It's still a little wet. Yeah, when the paper is still wet and your paint is still wet, I was just tossing them and I put them on top of each other so they kind of stuck. So you don't, you want to be mindful of that kind of thing. And again, like I said, depends on how you're going to use them. So if you're going to use these and tear them up, well, that doesn't really matter so much. So here are some samples of what we just quickly did with a brush with a credit card. Where's the great one here? Credit card? That's not true. It's a gift card. It was a gift card. I keep calling them a credit card. My little brayer and uh, a paintbrush. And we just quickly created some painty papers. Now, I want to show you some things we can do to use these baby papers. Now, I'm going to put my little jelly plate off to the side. And I'm going to pick a page out of my my not daily my not so daily journal, and um, I'm just looking through here to see what I've already created and where I can add maybe oh that see this 
paper we created would go great with this. But I've already put this napkin down or whatever that was. I think that might have been a piece of uh, tissue paper, kind of. Some of these are a little bold. Hmm. I just want to work with what we've created here. So now I can prepare some of it. And I'm thinking I might like to use this little piece. Could go here. And I can continue to tear this. Now there is a right and a wrong way to tear your paper. If you like to have um, let's see if I do it incorrectly. Yeah, see, now I'm tearing it right. Okay, here's a piece. So if you tear it towards you and you get, get that little white edge, you might not like that. But if you tear it away from you, you won't get that. So I could put this here. And I'm just going to use a, a glue stick. So I can start to pop these down to start preparing for when I find something I want to put on this page to add. So this is just some suggestions on how oh, I've got some extra glue there. I don't want my pages to stick together. When I close my book. I'm still wanting to use that other color. Mm. You don't have to just tear it either. You can put it down in a whole sheet. You could get out. Maybe you have a favorite punch. Get out a punch. Oh, this might look good here. Hmm, lots of thought. I kind of like this page. So I'm going to tear off the edge because that's just a plain cream color. So I'm going to tear this. Just going to use what I have here at my desk just to show you how we can use some of this pinky paper. Oh, you know what I'm going to do before I tear that? I think I might like to stencil on this. So I'm just going to get out my Stays On Midnight Blue ink pad. And I usually keep handy here next to my desk different stamps that I can use. To create any kind of a collage type of thing. I have on the back. Oh, that's a small. Okay. So this is a letter script stamp block. This is by Stampin' Up. This is a 2000. Stampin' Up, and it, I think it's called French Script. Now, I don't want the whole thing because I don't want it to be real square. So I'm just going to put some of this ink here. And then I'm just going to press this down. And I don't, for this particular purpose, I don't really care about getting a super great print. I didn't print at all. So I'm going to do it again. And I think what I'm going to do this time is because I'm working on top of that book. I'm going to put it on this way. And rub on my stamp. Now already that takes it up a notch. And look at that painting paper. In my world and the ladies that I hang out and do art with, we call that yummy. <laughs> right? 
the nail. Let's tear it. Let's tear it this way. I like it right there. Now collage is about layering and using what you have, different scraps, different um, media. This is called uh, Distress Oxide. It's kind of like an ink, but a little different. It works and reacts a little different. I'm just going to add some of this to my edge. Now you can ask me a question on the video and I can go into more detail about this stuff. You can Google Distress Oxides if you're new to all this stuff. You think it's cool and you want to get started. Maybe you're newly retired or you've got a vacation coming up and you want to do something creative while you're on vacation. You're thinking, oh, I might like that. You know, some of your thrift shops is a good place to pick up some stuff. You know, that somebody maybe is not going to use any longer. And you can get some of these tools. You just see if you like them. So now I'm going to press that down. Now, I want to see what else I might have sitting by my desk. That might work that I can add to this page. Here's a piece of doily. I have it in blue. I'm just going to tear this. I think I just want the lacy part. That's kind of cool that way, right? Doilies are a little more fiddly to glue down. So just for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to hit it with a little bit of my glue stick. Then I have a baby wipe here. I'm just going to go over the top of that lightly to kind of knock that glue back so my page doesn't stick together. Let me move that over. Maybe you can't see that as well as I thought you could. Now, I think I might want another piece of this painting paper that we used earlier. Oh, we have this one. It's in the same color, but this was done on the text. The, uh, the book. So let's grab another piece of this. Tear in a narrower strip. Oh, I think I like it this way. That looks kind of cool. So I'm just adding my glue. Now, while we're talking here, I'm going to quickly turn on my hot glue gun because I want to show you how to make a cluster also using your painty paper. Now, see, it may bother you that that writing on that page is sideways, but that, that's okay with me. That works for me. Now, I want to put a cluster or I want to put a focal point on this page right here. All right. So we have this piece of blue that we did on the on the harder cardstock. It was a little heavy, not harder, a little heavier cardstock. I'm going to use this as my substrate or a base for my cluster. So I'm going to just tear this and make a square. Actually, you know what? I've got, it's kind of small. Let's see. I've got my little circle punch here. Let's see what this looks like. Maybe we can use both. 
That's really small. Okay, so we've got a little circle of it. I don't think I want the square quite this big. Now I like torn edges. Depends on what you like. You may not like torn edges so well. All right, so I've got that. Now a cluster is just a grouping of fun stuff that you can put together. It could be lace, it could be ribbon, it could be a cutout of, uh, of an image that you like. It could be a series of dots, circles, more squares. So I've just got some elements here that I'm going to try to work with. Now I've also got a little more of this so we can incorporate some of that. Making a cluster is all about layering but in this particular case I just want to show you that you can use your painty paper as the base or the substrate to create a cluster or a focal point on a journaling page, an art journaling page, or perhaps um, a collage or a mixed media piece. So I've got a piece of fabric here, I'm kind of getting dark and kind of the blue. This is cheesecloth. I love cheesecloth. You can find this at Walmart and you can color this, but it comes in, in this white color. And my first exposure to cheesecloth was when my grandmom used to um, make soups and she would do a bouquet garni. And she'd wrap her spices in this and tie it together and drop it in the soup pot. But now I use it in my art and I love it. So we've got our painting paper here. Now you can see I have a little bit of fabric here. I have just a little bit of a cluster that I started to create over here. So I'm gonna get a pair of scissors. I'm just going to take a little piece of this. Now I'm wondering about the size of that. Hmm. A, I think that's a pretty good size, but I think I do want to stamp something on there. Some kind of an image, perhaps. Let's see what I have in my drawer. Hmm. Live with passion. Let's see if I can get this to stamp well on this. Let's see. Let's use this as a sample. Yeah, that stamp's pretty nice. It's a nice stamp. Live with passion. So let's put that on our painting paper. And let's take some more of this ink. Let's darken those edges so it kind of hopefully pops off the page a little bit. And I'm thinking I want to put it right there. I want to close that up. And then I'm going to take a little snip of my cheesecloth. And maybe put a little piece of that down there. And a little piece of my fabric. Now over here I have another little piece of, I guess you would call it cotton trim. This is a little vintage piece. Now these are all things that I have sitting by my desk. Now I don't want to cover up my cheesecloth completely. Now I have my little circles here. Let's see if I can use these. 
again, I think I want to ink those edges. This was the one that was more like cardstock. This is what the base of our cluster is. And these were just pieces from our painty paper. Now this can get messy. I'm trying not to get too messy, but I think my fingers are starting to turn a little blue. All right, now I've got a little stapler over here. And I'm gonna take that little stapler. And I'm gonna put these little discs together. I'm just gonna staple them. Now, I did show you earlier some painty paper. I made painty paper like this. I think I wanna see how a piece of this is gonna look underneath my cluster. I like to lay everything out first to see how it looks before I commit to putting it down. Hmm, I kind of like that. Oh, I wish you were here live so you could give me your opinion. Hmm. Maybe I'll twirl it that way so we can see more of that spotted. Kind of like it that way, I think. Don't be afraid to stack things on top and layer things. I think ultimately you'll be more satisfied with the end result. Now I turned on my glue gun, which I find very helpful when I'm trying to do something like this, where I don't want to wait and have um, have to wait for my, my glue to dry. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of like that. I didn't include the rest of that toily, but I think that's okay. Now, I just need a little something else, and I think what I need is a button. Let's see if I can quickly find and grab a little handful of buttons. If I can find something that's going to work. I'm looking for something that maybe can be a little pop of color or something a little different. Oh, this is a gold and black. Hmm. I don't want anything too big and bulky because I want to be able to close my book. Now, my book doesn't have to close perfectly, but I do want it to be able to close. Let's see what else we've got here. Ooh. Ooh that might be nice. I'm looking at the computer screen to see what you guys are seeing. Boy, it would be great if I could find a square one. But I think the chances of that are probably slim. Oh, that's an old timey one. Oh, that dark blue one looks kind of nice. All right, now the other thing that I like, I don't like to have my buttons with that some kind of a thread in it. So let's just see what do I have handy here. Uh, I don't know if I can get that's kind of large to go through that hole. Oh, I can separate that. All right, this is some white twine. So it's a soft twine that I can untwist. And 
I'm going to put this through my button. I hope. I hope. I hope. If it doesn't work, I can get, yeah, it's not going to, it's not going to cooperate. So let me get a little darning needle. Let's see here. If I can get it through this, through the eye of this needle. See, now most, I shouldn't say most, a lot of people wouldn't fuss about this. But I want you to get the best ideas that you can get. And that, it's not cooperating. That's making a mess. It's making a mess, I say. If at first you don't succeed, hold everybody up on the video and do it again. Gosh, my scissors aren't even cutting that. That's not good. We're going to have to go with a bigger needle. I just hope it fits through the uh, hole of the button. That's the thing that's often can be fiddly. Now, once I get this button threaded, I'm going to get that hot glue gun. So what I'm going to do is just pull this thread through. Down one side and up the other. And then I'm going to tie it. I'm going to tie it twice so it does not move. There we go. All right. Now, now we're, all, we're in business. Okay. So just because I wanted to go quicker, I'm just going to put this down with some hot glue. Normally, I would use my glue stick here. Or some wet glue. But I'm just trying to move this along here. And then I want to put down my cheesecloth. And like I said, I don't care if I cover up a little bit of those words. Because you can still read it. Put down my fabric. And then my little bit of cotton lace and then my button put a little clop of that glue there and then I've got my three little circles that I can add to the top now I want to get a pair of scissors that I can really trim this nicely And then I'm going to trim, I hope, that lace doily off the edge of my page. And there we have it. Now I'm going to pick this up very gingerly because I've got all those buttons. <laughs> and there you can see. We used our painty paper that we created. We stamped on it. We used a portion of a paper doily, and then we used some other painty paper, made some circles, added some fabric, added another piece of painty paper down here, and we can call this page in my not-so-daily journal finished. So, I hope you find this very helpful. If you're at all curious about painty paper and what it is, how to make it, and how to use it. Let me know what you think. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe if you haven't already. I would appreciate that. Please leave me a comment. Ask me any questions. I'll be happy to get back to you. And don't forget, take time to be creative. 
and enjoy the journey. Until next time, bye-bye.